What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Mean Green Show. What's up, what's up, what's up? My boy, Jay Money. Tell him what's up, Jay. What's going on, man? All right. Change of scenery today. Change of scenery. It's actually sunny outside. I'm hitting the pool. Oh, yeah. When I seen Jay, I was like, hey, bro, you wearing shoes or flip-flops? <laughs> actually, I said something different, but it was a little weird. Remember, I was like, hey, are you wearing shoes or shorts? Oh. <laughs> he says, you wearing flip-flops or shorts? <laughs> flip-flops or shorts. And everybody's like, huh? Even my little boys like, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, man, so we're still on the series. Look good naked. Uh, the feedback has been awesome um, to just see people first listening yeah. and watching. So for those that are listening and watching, thank you for tuning in. That's awesome. And also to see that is impactful. Yep. You know, it's it's one of those things. Sometimes you work towards not knowing what you're working towards. And that's when I think people can jump off the boat because they don't know their focus. But if your focus is to look good naked, then I think that opens the perspective of everybody. Yeah, definitely. Cool. All right, well, I we're in my garage, so anytime I'm on the camera in the garage, when I do daily sweat workouts, <laughs> I always have to do a disclaimer. The green beings are here. So if they jump out, hopefully they have clothes on. Come right on this side. And they come right <laughs> on in, right next to Jared. And they, Jay, Jay. <laughs> they say Jay or Jared? They say Jared. Jared. They think they say Jared. Jared. Yeah. I think they say Jared. But um, look good naked. Going to part three. Yep. But we did have a question. We didn't, was not not able to get to part two. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk on nutrition just to open up with, and it'll kind of be our recap from the previous episode, yeah. which will lead us into the next episode. So um, question, Jay, and i read it. If you want to answer, you jump it. If not, I attack it. Cool. Uh, shout out to my girl, um, Miss Young. She said, I know y'all said y'all don't offer meal plans, but for people like me who want to eat right and don't really have time to prep, can you recommend a company that meal prep? Also, I heard you count macros. What role does that play in losing weight? So it's kind of a two-part question. Mm-hmm. Uh, you take one, I take one. So for the first part, um, obviously, there's uh, plenty of meal prep companies out there. Uh, mm-hmm. I know for myself personally, and shout out. We're going to do a shout out to My Fit Foods for myself. Yeah, I go there. Um, I go there, man. One, is right across the street from my house. Uh, two. It's 40 minutes two. from me. <laughs> But they, they do have people that drive in all, all over the place. But mm-hmm. they have their calories um, right on right on the, the label. So you're able to see wh- exactly what you're eating. Um, they got a wide variety of meals. So they try not to eat the same thing every day. So anytime you can get a company or, heck, even if you know somebody that's meal prepping and they can actually give you a calorie count, that's something to roll with. If you know what you're eating, obviously it's better for you. So that yeah. would be my personal recommendation as opposed to you just, you know, throwing some chicken and X, Y, Z into a, a pot and saying, this is my meal prep for the week. Absolutely. And there are so many companies, right? Uh, what's the other spot I go to? Uh, Mil- Muscle Makers. Muscle Makers, another one. Shout out to those guys. Um, but I like what you said about the macros being on the label. Yep. That's key, guys, especially for losing weight or putting on muscle. Knowing the breakdown of what you're putting in and the amount of sugar and all that, that's huge. So, um Whole Foods, they do meal preps. Yep. Um, H-E-B. H-E-B. So I'm trying to think of, because depending where you stay mm-hmm. is, a, is a big part. Look out a, look for a company called Trifecta. I, I was listening to a podcast, and it's a guy that I watch from mm-hmm. the Instagram world, and he has a company, it's a group, and they ship all over the country. So I'm hearing great things about them. So if you're not local in Houston, and you're hearing this podcast, look at look at Trifecta. Yep. And if, if y'all happen to know them, tell them we gave them a shout out on this <laughs> podcast and we'll take a percentage of, of no, just, kidding, <laughs> just kidding. And there, there are some companies that will actually send you basically, it's not already cooked, but all the ingredients you mm. need to meal prep. Mm. So like you could do it on a Sunday, but everything you, is weighed out, it, everything is there for you. You have companies yeah. that do that for you as well. So yeah. you have plenty of options. Yeah. And also use your, your own private social medias because there are so many mom and pop food prep companies, yeah. you know, that, that have a passion for cooking and um, try them out, especially if they got labels. If they got labels, that's they super o- They dope. own it. They own it. Yeah. Um, the part two of the question was the macros. You kind of led into it a little bit. Okay, so yeah, the macros plays a huge role. Um, it makes things a lot easier if you know exactly what you're putting in your body from measuring it and seeing the energy that you have versus. And I say this too with the macros, and I'm not a nerd when it comes to macros. Mm-hmm. Like I've done it just to say, man, I can do it, yep. but it's not my thing. My wife though is different. Yep. That's her thing, but you can also adjust 
when things go right and don't go right. Yeah. When you don't put macros or you're not keeping over your macros and you're just eating, you don't know nothing. Don't nothing. Know. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. For, uh, for macros, I know one of the things that I like to look at just because – you you can there are obviously three different macros you got your proteins your fats your carbs you can uh, adjust those based on your own body mm-hmm. so maybe you're eating a diet where you know you're high in carbs and you feel like crap yeah you 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 don't know why you're feeling bad unless you know exactly what you're putting into your That's body it. so it's that part um, if you're trying to gain muscle if you're not gaining muscle if you're not eating enough protein so it's, it's just certain things you don't know un- until you know so. That's real. I love it. That's, that's, that's why it's so important. Important. For sure. Part three. Part three. You ready to out? Yes, sir. All right. So, help my memory. I'm a little older than you. Season, uh, part one, not season one. Part one of Look Good Naked. We talked about. The training method, how to look good naked. Boom. Part two, we talked about. How to eat. How to sustain that through pa- fuel. Part three, we're going to talk about. Goal setting. Goal setting. Why is this important, Jared? Um. Oh, oh dang! I was about to hit y'all with a, a, a quote that I forgot as soon as it was about to come out of my mouth. Oh snap! <laughs> oh snap! Oh snap! It, it? It's gonna come back. Without a. Is it a proverb? No, it's not. I like a proverb, and I was about to say it, but it's then I forgot about, it. Was about not having a vision. So is it this one? I wonder if it's this one. It's a Chinese proverb. It says, uh, crap, I just forgot it. It was something to the, the, the sense of um, action without a vision is a nightmare. Vision without action is a daydream. Did I say that right? I have no idea, but I like the way it sounded. Vision, I'm going to repeat it. Action without vision action without vision is a nightmare okay okay vision without any action is a daydream i think i did say it right that's, that's, nah, i don't yeah, know if i said it in the right order solid. but um you know goal setting specifically for me jared has been essential yep. like everything that i've ever produced it was a goal i personally have not achieved anything that i didn't set a goal to think about that like yep. i did not I'm trying to think of something outside of fitness. I just have to use fitness. Tina. I mean, Tina. Yeah. All right. Uh, being married, I didn't just one day, I, I didn't, oh, I'm getting married today. Yeah. Like, at one point, I was like, you know what? It's time. Yeah. It's time to throw in the towel. <laughs> Not the towel. It's time to throw in the <laughs> towel. I've done the work. I feel it. <laughs> I've ran the miles. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> but I, I set it as a goal, right? Ooh, um, no, Tina, listen. <laughs> Tina, know the truth. You got me. <laughs> you got me. It wasn't like Martin and, and Gina. <laughs> damn, Gina, damn, you got me. It wasn't like that. It was more so. Um, for me, with Tina, I came, I'm one of the lucky black kids, right, yeah. that have, or any kid. I can't say black. I just know in our community, um, I didn't see a lot. But I had a mother and a father. Yeah. So I know at the age of, I guess, when you start liking girls, 10, I don't know. I knew I wanted to have a, a wife. That was always a goal for me. Got, golly, going back to goal setting. Goals. All right. um, even I have a board in there, Jared, I made at the age of 17. You had to put things you want to achieve on one side. Mm-hmm. It would have been pretty cool for me to pull that out. On one side of the board, you put everything that you want to achieve in life. And then on the other side of the board, you write everything that would keep you from the other side. Right, so I used to do this at Mean Green, where cool. whenever you joined boot camp, we had an initiation to get inside of boot camp. So they'll write in, ask Jeff Weber about it. You'll write in on one side all your goals, and then the other side, you write out all your distractions. So if you say, "Hey, I want to lose weight," but on the back side it says "Eat Hot Cheetos," you have to pick one or the other. Mm-hmm. So the side they wanted to break, they would put face up. So either you're gonna break your goals and get every distraction, or you're gonna get every distraction and break your goals. So going back to what I just mentioned. At the age of 17, I did that, or 16, I did that. And on the front side, I said, I want to have a fine wife. That was actually a goal. <laughs> so it's always been a goal a for fine me. Wife. A fine wife. <laughs> she had to be fine. She had to be fine. I want the long hair. Don't care. That's fair. But um, it was a goal. So I don't know where I would be in life 
I never set a goal to be married. Maybe I'll be out there still a bachelor. And uh, I don't know. No, no green beans. No green beans is a lot, right? But what about our fitness goals? You know, some, so many people join the gym and they just join. Mm -hmm. You know, it's trendy for some. Um, others see other people happy about it, but they just join. So I'm hoping this this audio, yeah. this visual is a component to help you set goals. And uh, we'll break down, I guess, Jared, maybe how to set short term and long term, because I believe in both. Okay. And, uh, ooh, Breeze in Houston. And um, what happens when you don't set goals? Yeah. That's, that's dope. That one's going to be hard felt. For sure. That one's going to be hard felt. All right. So let's do a three part, three points. Point number one. And I'm freestyling these points. Let's get it. Point number one, um, a person that works for no goal earns nothing. With the body, you're training Lisa. We still talking about Lisa. Was it Lisa last week? We made the name Lisa? I think so, yeah. Okay. We made the name Lisa. Um, Lisa comes in to talk to you to join boot camp. And she says, hey, I'm joining your boot camp. And you say, why? And she says, I don't know. You as an instructor, how do you train her if you don't know what she's – What's our goal? Uh, that's tough. Just be, I mean, there's so many components to training that have to be taken into account. What's your motivation? Yeah. Why Why are you doing this? Um, uh, we also got to look at mentality coaching. Mm. Like, what What is What is your why? If you don't have a why, let's be real. If I just went to a gym today and I was like, Hey, I'm just gonna go lift today. I'm just, I'm just going to go lift. What you doing? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go in there and lift. Three curls. Yeah, I'm going to do three. Somebody might be, you know, you, you, you're not going to get out of it what you need to be getting out of it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know what you need to be getting out of it if you don't, don't set a goal. So, for as a coach, how do I coach somebody that doesn't even know you can't. what, yeah, what they're supposed to be doing? You can't. And when I say you, I'm talking to the person that needs to hear this. Yeah. I'm not saying everybody. But – you do have to take some accountability. If you were the person that joined a gym or hired a personal trainer or joined a boot camp and you, maybe you wanted your body to change, but you came in there and worked with no purpose, it's not the trainer's fault. At all. It's not the company's fault. Like, you have to work for a purpose. We did something, um, then what was it, at the beginning of the year at the gym when we had everybody write their goals. We, they wrote a letter to themselves, yeah. right, and get ready because it's coming. Commitment day. Yep. We so at Mean Green, it's, it's a lot of people. Yep. So we're not training five people where I can say, okay, Jared, today's Monday. Let's sit down and talk about your goals. Now there are individuals that would literally hit me up or see me at the gym, and say, hey, Chris, I want to talk to you about my goals. Boom, we'll set up a time and we'll do it. But for us, we do events for you guys, for those that do Mean Green, to create goals. So if you wrote a letter, guess what that was? It's goals. Yep. Just trying to get you to set goals. But um, they write this letter. We'll send it to them via mail in a year or I guess a year from when they wrote it. And then either they hit their goals or they didn't. Yep. So going back to Lisa, she says, I'm pivot and kind of make some goals. Jared, I want to lose 30 pounds this year. What's your approach? Like, can you help her? 30 pounds? I mean, she has a goal. She has a goal. Yeah, so that. <laughs> Now, now from from having that goal, and that's a long term goal. She, yeah. said, she said it out a year. That now I know how to approach that as a coach. I know how to tell her, "Hey, this is the game plan. I know how. To, this is the amount of effort you got to give. This is the amount of times you got to work out. This yeah. is, like, it, just just from having that end goal, you you're literally able to draw out your life. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's um, you know, I do something really weird, Jared. I do. It's weird. When we record these podcasts, do you know I go back and actually listen to them? I do too. Okay. <laughs> it's two people weird. Yeah. I do too. So, okay. So, I, I told myself on this podcast, I'm not going to get off into, like, personal development too much because I caught the last podcast. And I was like, dang, I kind of, that wasn't even fitness. It was just <laughs> whatever. And, hey, they loved it, so. Okay. Got a point. Got a point. So, I want to paint this picture, this illustration, when you set goals. If you think of my son, shout out to Christopher and Caleb. They just graduated from kindergarten, right? Yeah. Um, you have kindergarten all the way to the 12th grade, which is your senior year. So as you 
imagine this pyramid going up imagine the base of it being kindergarten and the, the top tier is the 12th grade the closer you get to the 12th grade the happier you are the more peace you have the more joy you have why because you're almost at your goal first grade at the age of 17 <laughs> you're de potentially depressed you are frustrated you might have anxiety you, you may th think about it if you're 17 in the first grade have you ever seen happy gilmore <laughs> imagine that right so but it, the truth of the matter is that's where we're at sometimes in our fitness level I'm, I'm not trying to grade you but we set these blueprints sometimes as goals hey by the age of 40 i want to be married i want a white picket fence with a house and then when you get 40 and you're not married with a white picket fence, how do you feel? All right. That's rough, yeah. So sometimes we set these goals and goals change. You pivot. Life happens. So as you go back to that 12th grade, down to the foundation of being kindergarten, you kind of got to put yourself in place. Where am I right now? Mm -hmm. So let's go back to fitness specifically. If we use Chris and the goal that I have, I feel like I'm in high school. Right. I feel like I'm in high school. I think I'm maybe I want to say about 10th grade because I'm not Jerry. I'm not exactly where I want to be, but dang, I'm pretty close. Mm -hmm. And my goals have changed. I said this on the last podcast. I wanted to be 315, 10 reps, 405, 10 reps, or excuse me, 315 bench press for those that probably didn't understand what I was saying. 405 pounds for the deadlift. I wanted to be able to run a mile under six minutes and 30 seconds. That was a goal for me to keep. Yep. Now I don't care about that. I want to wake up in the morning. And touch my toes <laughs> no pain right no pain. and i want to look a certain way so now that i'm there it's just some things i want to get better at i would like to kind of create what i used to call the pursuit of happiness mm -hmm. where do you think lisa is if she comes to boot camp and she says she wants to lose 30 pounds is that the only thing she probably wants, or do you oh, think it's more absolutely not. there's always outside factors surrounding that just that simple goal i think a lot of the times um I don't know. I think 30 pounds is the the big picture of everything else that's going on. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think. So I'm a little older than Jared. So I'm I'm very intrigued in your response. Okay. Lisa comes in. She's 37. Not that I really care about the BMI and all that, but based upon the standards that are like BMI and other or other tests, she's considered overweight or obese, right? But she comes in, you look at her body language. They're going to think, wow, y'all do all this in Mean Green? <laughs> You're going to notice her pace, mm -hmm. the way she walks, the way she doesn't keep eye contact with anybody, the way that she doesn't really – verbally communicate as much she's um always super early but she doesn't sit around nobody matter of fact she's in the car 30 minutes before boot camp starts and then she gets out when she sees you walk up yep. right when she leaves she's very polite very grateful and then she leaves but she told you all she wants to do is lose 30 pounds you as Jared Garcia, what's your what's your mindset? What do you want to get out of her when she says, Jared, I want to lose 30 pounds? Is it just 30 pounds, or do you want to change some other things? No. I, uh, it's almost like it's a, it's an escape for her a little bit. But I feel like – I like that. Dang, I hate mm – -mm, mm -mm, You always tell me. Say it. <laughs> go for it. No, so um, – I mean, some some of the situation of what I'm in. Sometimes people are dealing with some stuff, and mm -hmm. there's just so much, figuratively and like, there's so much weight that they carry. And yeah. It's not just it's not just body fat weight. It's it's the Man. the social anxiety. It's the I'm not accepted. It's the oh somebody's looking at me. It's the yeah, man. But you know, it. it I love that, it. That's that, it's just a it's, it's one of the tough topics just because it, there's there's so much more to the picture than just oh I want to lose thirty pounds and that's why like as fitness coaches we're not just trying to get you to lose weight we're not just trying to get yeah, you to man. eat right you got to think about it, it's it's a fitness lifestyle like yeah. 
I think I, I, there was something I was uh, looking at um, about like working out in the mornings of like some event, uh, like days like today, like mm-hmm. to get up and, and do a workout in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like there's so much um, that it, it just is. You, if you don't get up and work out, you're probably that day. Oh, you're like, oh, it's a day off. I'm about to go drink a beer, X, mm-hmm. Y, Z. But you get up in the morning, you work out. You're like, mm, yeah. Let me make better decisions today. Exactly. Like the 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 mental playback that you get from just doing that workout, just kind of bringing it back back to Elisa. Like, there's so much that she could be that 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 workout needs to regulate in her life. Things like I that. Like that. Just being able to see it um, as like from, a, from a coaching perspective. like I like that. You just say, I like that. It's real. And the term coach for me and Green, when I, when I call Jared a coach or David or Alex, it's not a coach of just fitness. It's oh. a coach of making you a better person. Uh, when you said that, it, the term frequency popped into my head. So for somebody on YouTube and you're watching this, comment down below, say frequency so I know you're following us. <laughs> The reason why I say frequency is because in Houston, we have different stations on the radio. You have 97.9, you have 102, you have others, right? And it's nothing wrong about the station that you're on if you choose to be on that station, right? So if you're on 102.1, all right, and I'm on 97.9, it's nothing wrong with that. But it is a challenge if you're on 102, but you want and desire to be on 97.9. So when somebody tells us 30 pounds less, it may be a lot more of the things that need to take place to get there versus just 30 pounds being, you know, yeah. uh, t- taken off their body. So my question to everybody that's listening and watching, this is, man, I'm about to challenge you straight up. Like, set up, what, what goals do you really want to hit besides the physical realm? Like, just to be honest, you, you, have a, you have your mental, you have your emotion, yeah. and for some of us, our spirituality. Mm-hmm. If – all, so I have my physical, if I said this right, I have my physical, I have my spiritual, I have my mentality, and then I have my emotional. If they're not, if there's no alignment, something's off, I'm not going to feel the way that I want to feel. Yep. Straight up. So the, the, the slogan with Mean Green, believe, achieve, receive, it's not push up, squat, and jump. It's not just the physical. Yep. Like the first stage of belief, man, if you don't believe in the thing that you desire that you can't see, there's no progression. So that's my challenge for everybody is, listen, what's your goal? Okay, okay, Lisa, you want to lose 30 pounds, but what you want to do emotionally? Yeah. Because truth for the matter, and I wouldn't say this publicly in front of a whole group, but if it's me and her, and I'm curious for the person that's hearing this, Jared, I feel like I'm talking. I should shut up and then let you finish. Oh, you. Okay. For the person that's hearing this, I would love for you to comment down below or put on social media or even text me or inbox me if you had this discussion with me or any other coach. Man, I really want to say her name because she joined during COVID. She came from California, and um, we had this type of conversation. And then another – God, there's so many. Okay, anywho. Um, <laughs> yeah, you told me you want to do this physically, but I was just like, yo, like – because I can see their body language. Hey, it was a Zoom call. Like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm new to the city, and um, I really don't – you know, I just work. So I'm like, cool. Well, what about your social life? You know anybody in Houston? Like, I brought the question up. Yeah. No, I don't know anybody. Oh, man. Well, I mean, Green, I'm telling you right now, it's a different culture. Like, you're going to meet people. Y'all are going to become best friends. They're going to get married. They're going to invite you into their wedding. I would love that, man. If I can get to a city, not, like, boom. Yeah. Body language changes. I get to see the personality that they desire. And I know when I see them at the gym, it's not just 30 pounds they're trying to lose. Mm-hmm. I know she wants to meet somebody. So, cool. Hey, Miss Lisa. Here's Miss uh, Serena. Serena plays tennis, and she's <laughs> fabulous, and she's strong. <laughs> and then, she, Julie, I like tennis. And then, boom, right now, I just help her reach a goal that wasn't the 30-pound. It was actually meeting other people yeah. that are potentially in the same interest that she like. Um, emotionally, right? We've all dealt with life. Mm-hmm. If she says, hey, man, um, I'm getting out of a divorce. I'm not trying to hook her up with an old dude, right? I just want to let her know that she's not alone, yeah. right? Um, spiritually, somebody can say, hey, man, I just I feel like I have no purpose right now. I'm not trying to send them to a specific religion. I just want them to, Im- I want them to know that I embrace them the way that they are. So right then and there, yeah, she did walk up to boot camp saying she wants 30 pounds. But by the way she walked, by her body language, the way she react with everybody, I know it's something bigger. 
And I think when we set our goals, we got to set goals like that. That was a long winded. That wasn't even an answer. I just start talking. I, I just think it's real. And I think it does segue into our the next part of the question, which was long term, short term goals. Mm. Right? The long term goal in this in this scenario would be lose 30 pounds. Yeah. Personally, I'm more not necessarily short term goals. I'm more of a milestone person because the the goal, the end goal is that 30 pounds. That's the like goal that. we want to reach. But you can also set these milestones. So for milestones, those would be your your short term mini goals. Like we just we'll okay. add all of that in the same same light. But for you, you said would you say emotional, physical, spiritual? Um, what's the last one? Emotional, mental, mental, mental. Mm-hmm. So you can set short term mini goals that lead up to that thirty pounds. So one yeah. of the uh, short, whatever whatever it is. Yeah. But uh, it could be physical, mental. You sh- you should have. Uh, four of those goals on the way there, Yeah. right? So at whatever level, whatever point, you should have those four in them. But you should be reaching those goals all the way to the 30. So you're always achieving those little goals yeah. leading up to it. Yeah. So like you said, the um, – So, Jared, I do agree, man. Everything that you just said, the, the long term, right? And I want to recap on it because um, when you record in hot climates, <laughs> the camera sometimes can get overheated. So if – camera jump that's why it was because we had to put a fan on and if you can hear it i'm sorry but um if you can finish up you were telling me that or telling us that when you set that long term yeah. that 30 pounds is long term but all those milestones that you can create and conquer on the way there could you give me a, an ideal or a goal maybe you did personally tell, talk to us about okay let's do one for this is going to kind of go into Uh-oh. more business okay. right Kind of give them a little insight, but we won't say no numbers. Um, J- Jared is a billionaire, by the way. Um, if Jared moves down from one state to come here, and his goal is to start a fitness boot camp and have 20 people at his group, what was a milestone? Because that was the goal, but did you have that in day one? No, 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 not at all. Um I just want to say first thing is good to have somebody to talk to, set to help set goals. Because a lot yeah. of the times, uh, you for Ooh. yourself, obviously, you That's have in your mind what you want to do. But sometimes people can help you find more goals. Like, would you guys have thought to set four different mental, physical, spiritual goals without have hearing that? So that that's kind of why it helps to talk to somebody to that's help real. you set your own goals. But um, twenty people at boot camp, I think get get my first sign up. Like, get the very first one. Pause there, cause that happened. Yeah, that was that was a reality. Yeah, can you can you break that down? Your first sign up. What was the, what was your thought process as you was trying not trying as you was elaborating the program and who you are, and then when they actually paid, like, what was the feeling like? Like, I'm curious. <laughs> um, I mean, the first thing is 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 confidence. So, coming down. Um, uh, obviously, we're talking about my story, so I, I I was able to have confidence, and I I was selling before I came down here. I was selling football to not football, but a college campus. I was selling a college campus mm-hmm. to parents, like tr- trust me with your kid in a state fourteen hours away. Like, right. I was able to have those conversations. So uh, for me coming down here, it kind of felt very similar. Trust me with your body. That I know what I'm gonna, I'm doing. I'm gonna, you know, do what I need to do for you. Yeah. Uh, so, in, in that that first moment of you know being able to sell to somebody, it was kind of, yeah, like not not skepticism of myself, but like, I mean, you you don't know what you can do until you do it. Mm, that part. So like this this is my first boot camp. So obviously you had the jitters. Like am I yeah. uh, uh, am I gonna be uh, am I gonna be able to am I gonna be able to and, you know, we always I, – I, I like, you know, people set standards. You see standards, you, you want to reach them. So, obviously, you run run the boot camp. That Mean Green has a standard of, of boot camp trainers that I want to be a, a big part of and reach. So, I mean, my f- dang, am I, am I going to be able to provide the service I need yeah. to? So, it's, it's, there's always that whenever you're trying to sell that, that first package. Yeah. Like, and do I have that confidence? Boom, it happens. Yeah. Right? Yep. I remember, I don't know why I felt like it was a conversation once you had in the driveway. I don't know if that was like one of the first, but when you sign, and I'm doing this for a reason, and I'll recap. Yep. 
when you signed that first person up, did you drop the phone or did you walk away from that conversation like, oh, that was horrible? Or were you like, was there a celebration? What was, what happened for Jared? So, for me, I mean, it's, I don't know. I was going to say relief, but it's not really relief. It's like a, it's just a empowering feeling. Yeah. Like, I, I can do this. You're, yeah. you're a step closer to the end goal. So, we said 20, 19. Mm. Like, you're a step closer to that goal. That's it. Because 20, 2 zero, yeah. right? Now, we're at 1-9. One 1-9. Nine. One nine. <laughs> like, just step by step, it's getting closer. So Man, did you ever get to 20 people in your boot camp? Yeah. Boom. All right, so we're there now. What happens now? You you hit the 20 mark goal. You you came and you overcame maybe some of the thoughts and sounds in your head, but you, you did that, right? Now that you're there, what happened? Did you stop making goals or did you make more goals? I definitely made more goals. Yeah. So as I hear my alarm clock, <laughs> um, the reason why I ask that, man, is because I want to connect with someone in a special way because so many of us, and when I say us, I'm not saying y'all because I dealt with it and, and deal with it as well. Sometimes we don't start a goal because we don't actually believe we can be that person. You know, you said something key to me. Y- y- y'all look at Jerry and y'all like, man, he, he actually didn't think he can potentially sign up a person. You know, now you see the size of his boot camp, just like you thought that. And I think that's really special because somebody's looking at in the mirror. And we're going to talk about the mirror test in a little bit. Yep. But they're looking in the mirror, and, and they don't believe they can actually lose a pound out of the 20 or the 30, the 60, the 70. And you can. Um, the second thing, I love the fact that you stated the emotional part of achieving the goal, right? So saying I want to lose 30 pounds is just not a physical thing. I need to eat. I need to eat right, and I'm going to work out. <laughs> there are so many emotional attachments, especially – I can't say just food because food is my challenge between the two, but there are some people that probably eat really well, but when it comes to physical training, they may have a disconnection. Yeah. But there are emotional stages. I can emotionally say it's hot as hell, Jared, outside. I'm going to go run. I, I can fight that, and I can do that. But when you say, Chris, I need you to go download the my, my Fitness Pal app, and I need you to keep up with your macros and take pictures, like I have a disconnection, yeah. so I really have to fight to do that but there's an emotional attachment to it so i just i want everybody to really see the side of when you set goals that there's just not i'm going to lose 30 pounds there are so many other factors there's emotional attachments to it there's levels and stages and the milestones is the third part i want to say um is special celebrate your milestones you know there's nothing wrong with celebrating victories because it builds, you said the word confidence, mm-hmm. right? It builds character. It builds momentum. I mean, it's so many things that take place when you celebrate things that you did. So at the gym, I do this on purpose. I put this in the mean green system on purpose. We are probably the most fist pumping, high five, you are <laughs> awesome style gym. But the reason why I did that was because even in your darkest moments, if you celebrate someone else and they celebrate you, you're better that day. And if you do that consistently, it becomes contagious. If you're doing one thing right, you're probably going to do other things right. So, man, um, I bought my first car. It was an SUV. And uh, what year was it? It was 2010. I bought it, 45 North. I act like I had all this money, and I didn't. Got in, the, got in the dealership. I act like I had cars before, and I really didn't. <laughs> right? Kind of what you said. Like, you kind of winging it. Yeah. Bought the car. They financed me, whatever. I got out the car. I got in the car. Excuse me. I drove off, like, really smooth off the off the lot. Like, I've done this before, and I, I really never have done that before. <laughs> and I got on. It was 1960 and 45. Mm-hmm. In 1960, I exited. And, dude, I turned on. I remember the song. It was Drake, Successful. All I wanna be <laughs> with Trey Song. All I wanna be is successful. <laughs> Jerry, I turn that thing up. All the way. I hit like 80, 90, and 40. I'm like yelling like, ah. Joy. I've never did anything like that. Joy. I've never, I never did anything like that. And my sister Shannon set me down. She made me sit down, act like I imagined driving that car. The smell of the car. 
how will it wood grain feel on my on my fingertips like so when i actually felt that and i owned it i couldn't control not the physical it was the emotional the mental like everything else that i didn't plan that i needed to plan for i just felt it in one burst yeah so i'm and I remember, like, Chris, why in the hell are you yelling? <laughs> and I remember, like, parking the car, and I, I showed my family. And at that moment, I took that feeling to Mean Green because it was important to let people know, as we believe and she received, it's not the 30 pounds. It's everything else to get you to the 30 pounds. That's real, man. Oh, I remember that feeling. And I long for that feeling. I long for that feeling to this day. You know, we opened the first gym. Man, I'm about to sound weird. I turn on the same song. <laughs> ah, right? Yeah. You know, um, open the second gym, boot camps, bringing the first trainer on. That was a big step to me, bringing the first trainer. Ah, so, like, I still celebrate those things with the same song. But that's what, that's, that's what I do. Um, hearing that, Jared, what's your in, initial response? Because that's something I, I've never shared with him. Yeah, I don't think I've ever shared with anybody. Um Welcome to the Mean Green Show. <laughs> um, what's your What's your feedback when you hear that? I mean, that's real. I think I've called you a few times, and we're obviously getting a little deep with this talk. But shoot, there are times when I've literally personally just been brought to tears because it's 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 things that I I never saw possible for myself. So, mm. and obviously, you know, I'll, I'll tell you how blessed I am and how happy I am that that I, I came back and that I was able to connect with you. Because just those goals, like, uh, help me set goals. Sometimes it's, it's hard to to see things you've never seen. Mm -hmm. That part. And it's hard. It, I mean, that, that's, that's really what it boils down to. It's hard to see things you've never seen. So you kind of help me to envision and to see the bigger picture. But for me, like, it's still hard. It's, it's hard for me to, yeah. for, to I mean, to, to picture something that, I never again thought was even possible. So to be able to to, to reach milestone goals, to be able to uh, embrace a, a life and and live it in a certain way, um, like that that kind of stuff just it's the it's the the little things that just bring emotional yeah emotion emotions run high. I think That's the it. emotional goals are, are one of the biggest things. But I like um, that. What yeah, made you do that? What what made you you said it's hard to see, so it goes into our faith, mm -hmm. right? Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Yeah. Like if you look at the scripture, um, what made you, when we was on that dry erase board that was over there and I wrote down numbers, yeah. what made you say, okay? Because that's where a lot of them are at. A lot of them, we can, this is how you lose one pound and if you're consistent and if you eat this, we show the proven system. Mm -hmm. But what made you say, okay, because I want them to say, okay, today when they hear this and see this? Because here's the thing. Uh, there's always that picture out there, right? There's always you can do, you can do. If you feel like you don't, you're not capable of because you don't know how to, that's where the lack of confidence comes. Mm. I don't know. You, you can tell me I make a million dollars. If I don't know how to, I'm looking at you like a deer in the headlight. Like, what? But yeah. if you if you draw it out, if you do X, Y, Z, I might not believe in how I can get to the process, but I damn sure believe in myself. Mm. So if you tell me all I have to do is this, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that with every with every ounce of my being. And that's that's what it boils down to with the goal. Like you have to you have to one, take accountability for your own actions. And that's the same. You know, I do it now. I call you every night. Dang, that's good stuff. Chris, I'm getting complacent. I hate it. <laughs> he does. I'm, I'm getting complacent. We do I, it. I do not like doing that. That's me always self-reflecting and looking in the mirror. So you got to just be able to take responsibility for everything that you're doing. Everything. The good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> I'm about to make this a thing. I know. I love it. <laughs> just pop up and start clapping. Y'all going to have to look at my Instagram page to understand what's going on right now. Preach, brother. But, Preach. Um, yeah, good when, stuff. When, when you're able to do that, obviously you're able to, to fully engulf yourself into a goal. So that's 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 what it was. I, you, you said, hey, Jared, you got to – do this. You gotta go here. You gotta spend a yeah. certain amount of time here. I was like, okay. Boom. I, Boom. I can. I can do that. Boom. <laughs> okay. 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 I, the reason why I'm getting excited is because 
somebody's nodding their head right now. They like, okay. Okay. Because at the end of the day, I I commend any studio, gym, boot camp trainer that goes the extra mile to try to provide what they've learned and experienced to help the next person. Yeah. But deep down, somebody got to hear that and see that and nod and say, okay, I can do that. And I want you guys to know, man, um, obviously we're using fitness as a tool, but there are so many things that you've learned, you've read, you've seen, you've experienced, and you can do it. It's just time to nod your head and believe in yourself. And um, it's so cool as we talk about a subject title called Look Good Naked, <laughs> specifically goal setting. And I think everybody probably thought, okay, they're going to teach me how to if I lose 30 pounds, that means that's going to take this amount of time. And to do that, I need to eat that. Bro, boo, there's so much more to it. And um, I ain't going to lie, Jared, here, talking to you about this, I used to teach this in workshops and seminars. Like companies that book me and they bring me in and I speak to the staff or the organization. I kind of I kind of want to do it again. Get I, back to it. Because like – so I used to do something, and I'm not going to break it down, but it's something called uh, patterns to your goals. Remember how we spoke about patterns? Yeah. So literally, I would take a goal. Say Jared says, hey, I want to put on five pounds of muscle. I want to grow my boot camp from 100 members to 200 members. I want to open a gym in the next year. We would sit down, and I will make literally proven systems for each goal, and then we'll rate them kind of like the pursuit of happiness yeah. chart on where they're at. I think I want to get back to that. All right. Why not? I'm not in my head. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's do this, Jared. Um, this is a good show. Damn, this is good. <laughs> Y'all like this and comment. Um, share it. All right. Let's do this, and then we'll wrap it up. The mirror test. The mirror test. Because I feel, honestly, we did not not get to finish what we could have finished. With but, those, but. But. <laughs> all right. Mirror test. This ain't our last podcast. This ain't the last <laughs> podcast. Mirror test. When I say that to you, what does it mean? And once you once I hear what does it mean to you, I'm gonna ask them some questions. Okay. What you got? For me, uh, the mirror test. It has a little bit to do with the mirror, but ultimately, it's how you see, how you see yourself. That's what it is. So, when it comes to losing weight, man, you you hit the the psychological point that brought me straight to this mirror test. Mm -hmm. Like looking at yourself in the mirror, like, damn, I, can I lose this 20 pounds? Mm. How you see yourself affects you psychologically. How you see yourself um, is is everything, to be honest. Yeah. How you see yourself is everything. So right now we're talking about how to look good naked. Um, when you're talking about looking good naked, we, we just, let's bring the mirror test to what it actually is. What? How much does the scale matter? Because mm. now, now we're talking about how to actually – like, w what does look good naked actually mean? What does it look like, right? So I like that. I like that for too many reasons that I probably can mention <laughs> right now. I don't mm, – can I go there? How much time we got? I don't like the scale. I don't like it. I do the in-body scale, and I've done the Fit 3D scanner because um, if I want to know specific numbers and I want to beat them, it's just the mentality and, and the competitive nature I have. Okay, let me rewind. I don't like – yeah, that's better. Okay, erase everything I just said. I don't like scales for people that I train. Let me okay. say that better because – ooh, I almost said a name. We're going to drop somebody's name on accident one day. More than likely. We love y'all, though. We do love y'all. We love y'all. I've been to somebody's house and threw a scale away because she was so engaged with what a number said on a freaking machine, and it dictated her life. Yeah. Not, not her workouts, but her life. It dictated her marriage, her being a mother, her career, her happiness. So one day I was like, Dude, where you live? I went to her house. I went inside her bathroom. I grabbed the freaking scale, and I took it home and threw it away. That was not a part of her package. <laughs> right? 
It definitely was not a part of her package. But I loved her so much. I didn't want to see that freaking machine tell her she wasn't good enough. Yeah. And that's what too many of us do. We allow a scale in the morning. Majority of y'all do it at night, which is the worst thing, before you get in the shower. And it dictates the way you're going to sleep and the way that you're going to treat everybody else that you see that day. And that scale doesn't identify you as a person. Because the truth is, there are so many factors on the overall number when you step on that scale. Yeah. If you have not boo-boo, oh, sorry. <laughs> bow movement. Did I say it? I don't even say it right, huh? Is it bow? Is it what it be? Yeah. Or a bow. bow. You need to take a bow movement prior to getting onto <laughs> the scale. And then you haven't drunk water in the last two hours. Um, and empty your system with all fluid in your bladder, like you're probably not going to get the best reading on the scale, yeah. right? Um, it's a reason why when people are competing in fights, they do certain things so they can see a number on the scale, and then they go back to where they were and then go fight. So if a professional fighter does that, why are you doing that to yourself as someone that's just looking for your body to look better freaking naked? Yeah. I hate scales. I'm sorry. Let me drink some water. I'm with it. I, a hundred percent agree. My biggest pet peeve when it comes to training mm-hmm. is, Jerry, the scale ain't moving. Oh my the goodness, the numbers ain't moving. But oh my goodness, I will say this: the pants I put on this morning, whoo, I'm gonna have to keep coming. Yeah. It just it, it, your, <laughs> your body is doing exactly what you're trying to do, but you were so caught up on that scale. That scale, <sighs> it's a mental thing. Now let, now, let me say this. I'm going to be very, very cut, dry, upfront, vulnerable, everything right now. For the longest time, I could not crack 200 pounds. Okay. Let's talk about that. Yep. I could not get to 200 pounds. Yep. And for me, psychologically, so this is, I'm just letting y'all know you're not alone in this. Psychologically, I could not, like, I was small. I, I could bench press the most on the team. I, I, I'm not saying I did, I, but I could. I could bench press. I could squat the most. I could dead, I could do power cleans. It didn't matter. Because I Bad couldn't number. crack 200 on that scale, I felt small. Yeah. And I know that people feel that way. I, I felt that way. I know that people have the with same, same thing reversed. Because you can't get to a certain number, you feel a certain way. But like I said, and then you, you look in the mirror or you, you – yeah, that's what it takes. You got to look in the mirror. And this is this is gonna be my biggest piece of advice, and this will be my last one. You gotta surround yourself with. Mm. Come on. Let's just say good company. That's real. Because that again, they'll tell you what what you need to hear. That's real. Because a lot of the times, it especially for me, what it took for me to finally get myself out of oh, just because you're not 200 pounds doesn't mean you're small. Was people saying, bro, look at you. Like, That's real. Bro, it, it it literally took people saying that to me it took you going to go throw that scale away for her yeah saying hey you're 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 that's doing right. it that's real so sometimes you got to surround yourself with uh you, you got to have warriors around you because you're not in it by yourself <laughs> you're not i like that and to go back to oh i'm gonna say it again and go back to her <laughs> she actually end up i think dr- drop another 30 40 pounds and it's such a vicious going back to the term i used earlier a vicious cycle of beating yourself up you know one of the reasons why people don't lose weight is actually stress yeah think about that if stress is a reason why you don't lose weight but you're stressing about not losing weight, you know what i mean that's what it is so i mean this is this topic to me this could have been a whole episode on itself Mm -hmm. but i think that as people are listening and watching i just want you to know that a number does not dictate you as a person that's just like saying if you if 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 you're not a person that has ten million dollars in your account, then you're not a good person. Like a dollar amount, that number doesn't represent your identity and who you are as a person, yeah. right? Um, I just, yeah, the mirror test is the way to go for me. So, kinda. So, <laughs> when you look into the mirror, I rather you say, and the reason why I say kinda, I, I explain that in a little bit, but I rather you look in the mirror and say, okay, my pants are bigger my shirt is bigger that's what we mean by the mirror test yeah. 
versus you looking at the scale saying yay or nay because at the end of the day it can be water weight it can be ladies you can be on the cycle and you put on three to seven pounds that week it can be so many different variables but the mirror test you know looking in the mirror seeing the confidence the coolest thing i've seen i've seen a guy did a challenge we did not only did he drop the weight but he started getting haircuts and oh, yeah. like all that changes he started buying new clothes um, have you ever noticed just gonna kill me my, my older sister shannon Right now, she's been on it this year. She's been losing her, her weight. She's, she's, she, her body's feeling better, and she's just been buying fitness clothes and <laughs> like because she feels confident about it. Yeah. And and that's where we want you guys, man, to look in the mirror and not just see what you want to see physically, but look in the mirror and see the person you want to be emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So um, I'll piggyback off that just a yeah. little bit. One of my favorite things I've been getting from some people. Like I, I love hearing this. People like, oh man, I didn't, I, I didn't think I, I looked a certain way. But then I went to X, X vacation with some of my friends that mm. I hadn't seen in years. Oh, I went to so and so with some people I hadn't seen in a couple months. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh girl, look at you. Or, yeah. Oh hey man. Yeah. You've been, you've been you've working been doing out. doing something. Like the, what you get from those kind of comments, the old, those kind of compliments from people that hadn't seen you in a long time. Here's the thing. You don't, you, you don't know how you change if you're just looking in the mirror every day because you see yourself in that mirror every day. So it's really it's hard for you to say, oh, yeah, I'm losing here or I'm losing here. But when somebody that hasn't seen you finally mm. sees you after doing those programs and after eating right and doing all this stuff, and they're like, oh, girl, what you doing? That little boost of confidence, that's, like that, that's what it's all about. So that's that also plays into that mirror test, how people see you, how you see you. That's, that's what it's it. all about. We're, uh, we're going to the beach in or another country next month. Oh, yeah. So Dang, that is next it's next month. It's coming. So I got, I got, I know one of the couples I haven't seen in a while. Yeah. And I, I, well, I haven't seen his wife in a while. And I told my homeboy, I said, "Hey, bro, I'm about to make your wife feel uncomfortable, <laughs> dog. Cause when I come out there, you know." But I, I like the sense of what you just said, cause I never seen that approach. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm, I want to use that. When you said that, I was like, mm, "That is really good." You know, I look into the mirror and I judge myself or you train with me. You may say I might I do this all the time. And Jerry, w w I see myself in a picture. I'm like, oh, I need to do some push ups <laughs> or whatever. Right. He always like, bro, chill out. But also allowing people's compliments to 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 fuel you yeah. because it, it happens. You know, I can go to the gym and somebody they do it more so with my haircuts. When I finally <laughs> get a haircut, they be like, oh, you got a haircut today. So I think that's a compliment. Is that a compliment? Chris, bro. Okay, my bad. So, <laughs> so fitness. <laughs> if I go to the gym and, uh, you know, the trend now, I've been wearing my, my shorts that stopped at seven inches. Somebody has seen me and they be like, oh, man, you're, uh, you're putting some mass on in, in your legs. And that's the mirror test. Yeah. You know, versus the freaking scale. Um, that's it. They, that's pe it. People see you. People see you in a different light. So I it you got to get out of the mindset of, oh, you're just saying that. Like, no, they – they see the work you're putting in. I mean, it happens the other way. Yeah. You know, yeah. if if your home, okay, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> if your home or a home girl see you at the happy hour and they be like, "Ooh, girl, when the last time you worked out?" That's, you know, or, yeah. "Ooh, girl, um, you just, why are you wearing scrubs today?" <laughs> like, like, it's the truth. Straight up, it works both ways. It works both ways. So you'll take that compliment and say, "Oh, I need to go work out." Mm -hmm. So versus somebody yeah so like you know let those compliments man uh fuel your system and, and your mentality and uh i think ultimately man that's that's how you should move in fitness with goal setting and um the mirror test i feel like this is a subject we can probably go another hour yeah, on exactly but I'm, I'm gonna draw it to the end just because um you know, the goal with the podcast is to empower, to encourage, and for you guys to implement as well as, as ourselves. Um, let's do that. This is coming up, depending when you hear this, this is coming to the halfway mark of the year in the next yeah. month, right? Um, it's the perfect time. Set some goals. But when you set your goals, just a recap, don't set goals just based upon the way your body looks. Set some emotional goals, some spirituality goals, some, some mental goals. Um, how can you put other people in your corner, as Jared said, to fuel you to get to where you need to be? Now, this is another subject. Everybody don't need to know your goals. Damn, that's a good subject. Oh, I wish I had time to go there. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't need to know your goals. Like, you don't have to go on Instagram and tell everybody your weekly process. And everybody's opinion of you is not a reality. So make sure the people that give you an opinion are the <laughs> people that you 
Okay. That's just <laughs> another <laughs> whole. <laughs> golly, that's another whole one. Same, same, same. Um, so that's that with uh, setting your goals. And then, you know, obviously the mirror test, man, you probably heard it in our tone. Yep. Man, the scale's there for a reason, but it's not the only reason that dictates your success or failures. So you got anything? At all. I mean, in closing, like I spoke with my challenge last time, uh, said we got about seven months yeah. to commit to yourself. That's it. Um, I guess for this is a goal-setting podcast. I'll just say set your goals high. Yeah. Aim high, miss high. We all the way <laughs> up. <laughs> Aim high, miss high, y'all. And, yeah. Um, just keep going. Like whatever, it. whatever it is y'all got going, just keep going. Keep That's going, it. keep pushing, but make sure y'all work with a purpose. That's it. Other than that, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, series. Comment yeah. down below. What's the next series is the, is the thing. So y'all comment down below. We'll let you know what that is. But other than that, man, we're signing out. It's been a privilege to talk about how to look good naked. Yes, sir. And uh, let's continue to work on that. Cool. Right. Yes, J Money, we're out. <laughs>